Uh, sort of. I've been recording in every class using different cameras and different settings. So the camera that, that I really want to use isn't working properly. So this is my this is my third my third attempt to get a 1080p recording. Was it recording before? Yeah. Not. <laughs> 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 well, I can't realize that camera back there is recording all the time. Yeah. It's just, it's just not nearly high quality enough to see your, your whatever you were doing. Whatever, wherever your hands were going places. Okay, so anyway, um, so we're talking about entropy. We're just going to talk briefly about entropy because there's just a few minutes left. Um, and we don't have a lot to cover. But I do want to talk about um, what entropy is. What is entropy? Energy. <coughs> disorder, yeah, it's randomness. Entropy is randomness or disorder. And the universe loves entropy. The universe loves randomness and disorder. It's just, that's just the way the universe is made. Things tend towards disorder. The second law of thermodynamics tells us the universe tends towards disorder. If you want proof, don't shower and don't clean your room for a week. You're going to be in, under a, you're going to be in a lot of disorder. Yeah, probably a lot of trouble too. Okay. So the universe uh, tends towards disorder. Entropy is disorder. In chemistry, Specifically, entropy is molecular disorder. It's molecular randomness. How easy it is to find a molecule amongst a whole bunch of other molecules. And temperature plays a huge role in entropy. It plays a profound role in entropy. In fact, it plays such a huge role that where enthalpy is just delta H, the entropy term we're going to be using is not just delta S, it's T delta S. Because temperature plays such a huge role of entropy. Why? Why does temperature play such a huge role of entropy? Because it depends on the temperature of the molecules that Exactly. Precisely right. Yeah. Remember, what does temperature measure? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Temperature does not measure heat. Temperature measures kinetic energy, which is the movement energy of the molecules. So at high temperature, you have high movement. So what has more entropy? Four toddlers sitting on a sofa watching uh, Paw Patrol, or four toddlers running around breaking stuff? Yeah, four toddlers running around. So if you're, gonna, uh, if you're going to babysit, you would much rather babysit four toddlers at low entropy. Put them in front of Paw Patrol and turn it on. And if Paw Patrol's not available, maybe Deadpool. <laughs> so the cal Does that make sense so far? Okay. So the calculations for entropy are exactly like enthalpy. We're still using Hess's law. It's still a state function that goes from whatever you had to wherever you are. Okay? It's still a state function. So we're still using Hess's law. That is the products minus reactants. Hess's law for enthalpy was the delta H of the products minus the delta H of the reactants. Hess's law for entropy is the delta S of the products, or sigma delta S, the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants. It is exactly the same format. It's still a state function. It's still where we were, where we are. environments. 
Probably. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it's not like yeah. they, they didn't spend millions of dollars to do it. It's just okay. Now, really important. Hank mentioned this yesterday. We were watching our videos. Entropy has a has a variable. There's a, a unit that's slightly different than enthalpy. And the reason is entropy is more of a physicsy term. Chemists use convenient units. Physicists use normal standard units. So the standard unit is joule per kelvin mole, and that's what you're going to see with entropy. But in chemistry, we like to use kilojoules. We like to use convenient units. So when you get an entropy value of joule per kelvin mole, you need to divide by a thousand to turn that into a kilojoule per kelvin mole. Okay. Again, in chemistry, we use kilojoules. So when you get an enthalpy value that is joule per kelvin mole, make sure you divide it so you're using kilojoules. Because if you don't, you're going to find the detractor. It's going to be B. You're going to, oh, that's my answer. You write B. And you're like, oh, I was wrong. But all the math worked. Because you forgot to divide by 1,000. A detractor is the option on the multiple choice that looks like it should be right, but isn't. So just remember, entropy is going to come out as joule per Kelvin mole. Divide by 1,000 so it turns into kilojoule per Kelvin mole. Make sense so far? Yes. Questions? All right. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. <coughs> Moving on. <coughs> okay, so entropy is disorder. What state of matter would have very, very low entropy? A solid, exactly. Solids have very low entropy. Much like you, you are emulating a solid because you're still vibrating, but you're mostly fixed in position. So you're emulating a solid. Uh, you have very low entropy. It's, I can like write down, that's where every student was. If someone like said, okay, where was everybody? I'd be like, okay, that person was there, that person was there, that person was there, no problem, I got it. So solids have very low entropy. What state of matter has very high entropy? Gas. Gases have very high entropy. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the kindergarten in recess. The kids are everywhere. The poor teachers are like, I hope they don't stab each other. <laughs> oh, accidentally. I mean like with you know, on the fence, sharp metal and stuff. <laughs> Picking up, picking up sharp rocks and turning the shits. Yes. What else has high uh, high entropy? <coughs> Liquids have high entropy, and even more importantly, solutions. Solutions have high entropy. If you have a bunch of solid powder that has low entropy, but when the ions dissolve or when the molecular compounds dissolve, they can go everywhere. So if I had a sugar cube, it'd be like, there's my molecules. But if I dissolve it in the water, shake it up, I'm like, now the sugar molecules are everywhere. So solutions also have very high entropy. Um, okay. Question so far? <laughs> Almost done. Good. Not a lot to do. Not a lot to do today. Just want to talk briefly about entropy before Monday. Okay, qualitative. We can make some qualitative judgments about entropy. What does it mean for something to be qualitative? It's good. Hmm? It's good quality. Well, um, good is a qualitative judgment, but what is something, what is a qualitative description or a qualitative judgment? Yeah, judging how it is. Okay. A qualitative statement? is something that has a definition but has no numbers. Like good, bad, tall, short, long, skinny. Okay. Okay. That's not a, there's no numbers. Right. But things that don't have numbers are qualitative descriptions. So if you said, oh man, that is one stinky flask. They're like, that doesn't tell me how stinky it is, it's just stinky. They're like, he's very tall. That's a qualitative statement. No numbers. So let's take a look at this chemical reaction. Now this chemical reaction goes from two solids to two solids and three gases. Lean over to your neighbor and convince him or her that this and in this reaction, the entropy increases or the entropy decreases. And why? <laughs> let's get on this, I guess you said. Let's get to this. It's 
All right. So, if your neighbor thinks the entropy in this situation increases, give me a thumbs up. If your neighbor thinks it decreases, give me a thumbs down. Wait, you said Joey thought it increased. Joey thought it increased. She didn't argue. Yeah. Increased. Yeah. Looks like about two thirds increased, and the answer is it increased because not only did you go from two things. What would you rather babysit? Two kids or five kids? No. Two. 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 So, not only did you go from two toddlers to five toddlers, you went from two toddlers on the couch to two on the couch and three running around. Yeah. So, in this case, it appears that enthalpy actually increases. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see how it looks like it increases? All right. Questions? No? Okay. So on Monday, we're going to use this same reaction and we're going to apply Hess's law to it and look at how what happens when you look at entropy quantitatively. That means with numbers. Questions? No questions? Okay. So you can just chill out for the last five minutes. Yay, chill out.